All righty, y'all. We're going to go ahead and get rolling. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and get us started again with some prayer, and then uh, we'll kind of open the floor for you. Uh, gracious God, we, we're just so thankful for, for you, God, for all that you are, for all that you share with us. God, we lift up your name in praise. Uh, God, we pray for your uh, continued guidance. God, we pray for wisdom and discernment moving forward. Uh, Lord, just give us uh, hearts and minds and spirits that are modeled after you. Lord, we love you and we trust you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. So just a, a quick caveat before we get started, um, so we know kind of what we're, we're going to be able to address. Um, if, for some reason, uh, we're unable to answer a question right now, obviously I don't have my laptop just sitting right next to me that has all of our just spreadsheets and spreadsheets and more spreadsheets. Um, if there's a question that either we can't answer here uh, or if you think of something later, please go into the app and submit that through that message, uh, the, the meeting question submission portal. It's just a quick paragraph. You can write in your, your question and send it on to us, and we'll take a look at it as we continue to meet. Uh, the other thing is this. Uh, this is not a Q&A for, I'm sorry if this was the hope, this is not a Q&A where we're going to nickel and dime line items. So if you have a question that's like, hey, how much does this person get paid? Or how much did we spend on this last year? That's, that's not going to be the conversation here. Here we're looking at big picture stuff. Uh, if there's anything that in the presentation that might have been confusing or you need repeated uh, or, or anything specific, we'll, we're going to do our absolute best. But of course, we're also operating on the fly, so we appreciate some grace. That being said, Bruce, did you have anything to share? Actually, I had a couple comments I wanted to share. You know, I've, I'm one of those folks that has been here for quite a long time, um, over 35 years. I don't know the exact number. But we've been through a lot of ups and downs during that time. But the one thing that has held true through all that, that I firmly believe in, God has a special plan for Rain Tree. And I don't think that's changed a bit. Um, and I know for a fact that he will bring us through this trial that we're going through right now. I also want to just add uh, an assurance to you that this staff has done a phenomenal job in the last few years. Yes, our expenses have been, been more than we've been bringing in, but they have done a phenomenal job providing as much as they've been able to with the, the funds that we have available. So we owe them all a very big uh, thank you for all that they have done for us. Now, having said that, um, let's go ahead and just open this up. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, announce those now and We'll do our very best to answer them or get you the answer that you want. So does anyone have any questions right now? Ross. Ross. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. My hearing isn't very good, so. Uh, obviously, I think this is something you all have thought about uh, for in the future, but is there anything voluntarily, immediately, people can do to help raise money? So... Um, couple things that, that we're going to be undertaking uh, here shortly. Uh, we've been approached at potentially, this isn't a volunteer, but I want to, I want to touch on it because I forgot to mention it. Uh, we've been approached about uh, potentially doing some local ads, getting, literally just getting the church's name out there. That's not something that we've done in a while except through uh, social media and networking and stuff like that. Um, so that's going to be a, a, a huge reach. Specifically, when we're looking at line items that could potentially save us money, I'm going to highlight a few where we're looking for potential volunteers. So right now, we, I know I said we weren't going to nickel and dime, and then I'm going to give you a nickel and a dime. Um, so for example, uh, right now, our monthly lawn cost in order to cut the, cut the grass, maintain the, the gardens, that type of thing, is $600 a month. Now, that's chump change when you look in the, the grand scheme of things. However, $600 a month adds up over time. So if we get to the point where we can get a volunteer team of folks to take care of the lawn, then that's $600 a month that we don't have to spend. And that's the stuff that we're going to be continuing to look for and search for on our, uh, on our budget lines as we go through that. But just off the top of my head, that's, a, that's definitely one. Um, so we're talking about the lawn, 
Uh, I I'm, can't think of anything else right now off the top of my head, but we'll be providing that information. All right, what else? Other questions? <laughs> Don, do you have a question? What's that? I mean, uh, <laughs> yes. So what's this shepherding thing you're talking about? So uh, shepherding is going to be, uh, it's kind of a newer uh, program or a newer idea uh, that we've attempted to do before. And if you've ever uh, been a part of a church that has had deacons before, uh, shepherds are going to kind of more or less function in a deacon's role uh, in that there, we're going to be asking folks that we feel that we've kind of identified over time as folks that might uh, be willing or able to take on a certain parameter, uh, parameter of ministry here at the church. Examples for that are men's calling breakfasts, uh, uh, managing our if tables for our women's groups, um, overseeing a prayer ministry, uh, congregational care. What does it look like to, to, to have... Um, Honestly, for, for staff to have another person on hand beyond staff and elders uh, to be able to coordinate outreach with folks who uh, need hospital visits and need assistance and that sort of thing. All of those little pockets are areas where um, we actually, we were on the precipice of starting a deacon program in 2019 when I came on staff. Josh actually had a sit down meeting with the folks that he had invited and asked. And that was like, I mean, we were excited. We were rolling into fall 2019. We hit 2020 and everything just kind of crashed down. So um, that is a part of ministry that we're looking to expand in order to engage some of these different facets of ministry that honestly staff just doesn't have the capacity for. Yeah, Don. So on the, um, the vision, the church vision that you talked about, how crystallized is that in amongst you all? So, right uh, now it's still in. Wait, I would. Can I? Can I? Just, sure. Because um, it's without that we will not go forward financially, and so it seems to me that the sooner we can get that, the better. Absolutely. And, um, of course, as school starts, that's a big starting time too. But yeah. Um, anyway, it's. Yeah, I'll let you talk about that later. Sure, not a problem. Um, so I, I know I alluded to it a little bit in the presentation. Um, when I say that staff is, we've kind of been walking through several different programs that are specifically designed to ask important questions, to, to get us to dig a little bit. Uh, we spent about, oh gosh, we spent January through May of 22 uh, going through uh, a particular program that really focused more on, okay, where, what is the current state of our ministries? What does this look like? What, is, um, what does community look like? What does theology look like? What do all of these facets of ministry look like? And it kind of gave us a baseline to operate from. And then going into this year, we've specifically been looking at questions about, okay, now who were we and who are we? Because I, I, it's, I think it's really easy for us, and I'll say it's easy for me, to forget 2020. It's something I kind of would like to put out of my mind. But 2020 and COVID, it's, an, it's, it's uncharted waters. We've never walked through something like this in, in recent history and in modern day church. In, in the church at a time where faith in institutions in general is wavering across society. So established institutions like church or government or anything like that, as that trust in society wavers, then you add on a highly stressful, highly traumatic incident that has completely changed the rhythms of people's lives. I know I'm kind of getting off topic, but I want to make sure I get there. What was, prior to COVID, what was a decline in church attendance so much that before COVID, the average regular attender was considered a regular attender at church if they attended twice a month. Now, post-COVID, that has gone down to once a month. That's regular attenders, once a month. Now, I know for a lot of you, that's like, well, I'm here every time the door is open. You are the exception to the rule. In general... Regular attenders attend one time a month. So that being said, moving forward, we have to ask, okay, so, so where were we? Who were we? Where are we now? 
and where, does, where do we feel like God's really calling us? What are the, wh- where is the Spirit? This is maybe some of the most exciting stuff. Where is the Spirit collectively leading staff, eldership, and congregation here at Raintree? And that's where I'm excited to begin to engage with congregation on this discussion, seeing where we feel like gifts and talents are headed, um, where we feel like somebody might be suited for ministry, uh, because it, it, can't, it, it just can no longer be uh, the sideline. It, it just can't just be on the sideline. Now, it, we're, we're not going to a fully like congregationally run church, et cetera, but that's, guys, that's what we're on the edge of when it comes to understanding that we're going to lose staff should this pace continue. Um, so, Don, to going back to the core of your question, um, I would love to, cont- to bring out more and more of this vision as we develop it. I don't want to wait until September to just give it, give everything. So we're going to be kind of cluing in. I want to clue everybody in as we go. And then in September, September will really be kind of the unveiling, more or less. Uh, but I'd really love to keep you guys informed gradually as this language and this information comes out about who we are and where we're headed. Uh, Matt kind of said this, but I just want to stress it. This has to be a two-way conversation. We need your thoughts, we need your prayers, but we also need your ideas and actually your your uh, physical uh, input. So, you know, please be talking to us. Uh, if you have ideas, share them with us. We want to hear from you uh, as well in this whole process. We're all in this together. What else? Yeah, Chris. <laughs> Speak it into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> At your own risk. So, well, I was just thinking with, with Ross's question, something you can do right now, what makes this place special to you? Think about it. Like, how would you define what makes Rain Tree special to you? What experiences have you had here that are unique to this place? And you know, by all means, give God gl- the glory in this. I'm not saying, like, steal that from him because it is his glory. But it's, every one of you has a unique voice. Even the sound of your voice, like literally the timbre of your voice is different than anybody who's ever been born. That's how unique you are. So your experience is very unique to you. Articulate that. Figure out what that means, what that is for you. Write it down, right? Send it to me. Send it to Matt. Send it to somebody. And then drum up the courage to share that with somebody else who you think might love it here. Like, I mean, truly, I think even a Facebook post could help, like, if you've been looking for a church, ask me about mine because ours is really special because of this, and I have found this here. And you may you just never know who that's going to hit. So that's just what I wanted to say. That's something you can do today. Yeah, I think part of um, kind of touching on both of those things and, and going back a little bit to Don's question about vision, you know, one of the things that we've been discussing just recently is are the distinctives uh, about Rain Tree. You know, programmatically, we're, we're kind of a dime a dozen in Lubbock. We have Sunday service, we do Wednesday night classes during the year, we've got a youth program, we've got a children's program, and we do outreach with local mission partners. That's pretty much standard across the board here in Lubbock. So what is distinctive about Rain Tree? What, is, what, it, what sets us apart? What's different when people walk in the door? One of the things I can tell you right off the bat, when we walked in, felt like home. Now for some people, some people want anonymous. Some people want to sit on the back row and enjoy that quiet space, and I'll probably be more upfront in saying, this might not be it for you, because we're going to greet you, and we're going to welcome you, we're going to shake your hand, and we're going to try to make you feel and help you feel connected here. It's it's not a go and disappear church. But I think where congregation and where we can continue to grow are, okay, now we feel welcome, now where can we plug in? Where can we connect? Where can I, as a new guest, where can I create an anchor point relationally with other people here at Raintree? And when we understand what, what's distinctive about how we do that, and then we plan how we do that and execute that well, 
we're, we're hitting on all cylinders. Yeah, done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just to build on uh, what Chris said, I think we should all go home and write that down and actually send it to these guys so you can start to create a list of things yourselves, and that'll help with your with the vision casting and development. But, um, yeah, we need to action point, do that. Go home and do that. Think deeply through it and do it. So let's do it, okay? Let's, let's see. <laughs> Save some hands here. Who's going to do that? All right. <laughs> Come on now. Let's do it. Well, I think, um, you know, moving forward, I, I said two and a half months, I don't know how many times. Though it's not going to be, hey, we had this meeting and we'll see you in September. Um, it can't be, right? Uh, so, I mean, starting today and moving forward, you can expect regular communication. You can expect updates about, hey, we would love for you guys to go and submit this form online and tell us what you really love about Raintree and your time here and what makes this place stand out and so distinctive so that we can highlight those things. Hey, we've got a prayer event coming up two weeks from now on Wednesday. Please be there. Please come and join us for 30 minutes of prayer. Or we're going to have a worship night, and it's just going to be a celebration where we stand and praise and sing and enjoy our time with one another. But there, there will be consistent uh, updates along the way. We can't just let this be a one-time conversation and it's done. It'll have to be ongoing. What else? <laughs> Rune. Oh, okay. I mean, you like Chris. <laughs> um, what I want y'all all to know, and what the staff and the elders have been really considerate of, is the fact that no matter what we're doing and how we're going and how things are looking, over the last two years, we are still in partnership with missions in Lubbock. We're, we're partners with Open Door. We're partners with Kingdom Come. And we still support them every month. And that's awesome. We also have been able to do benevolence over the last two years because it's been hard on everybody. And so not only benevolence for church members, but we've been help, able to help people from the outside. And I know that's not something y'all always see. So just to know God is at work and... <laughs> He's using our resources in good ways. Um, and I just thought it was really important for y'all to know those two things. We're not sitting on our money and just paying an electricity bill. We are doing things outside the church. Yeah, specifically, if you're unaware, um, part of a stipulation in our annual budget is that 10% of every month, of monthly contributions, goes directly to local missions. And then that gets divided up from there amongst Open Door, Kingdom Come, Honey Elementary, which they're celebrating their 40th anniversary. I have a meeting with their principal next week. It's going to be a great year for them. She's excited. It's a new principal. She's excited, got a ton of energy about us partnering with them this next year. Lots of opportunities will be coming that way as well. They want people to go in and serve in classrooms, um, to write letters to kids and you know, back and forth correspondence and whatnot. A um, lot of cool stuff happening there. Uh, we're a, a Red Cross emergency shelter, and we've been utilized a couple times, actually, this past year uh, for that specific um, outreach. We've gone out and done smoke detectors for them as well. So a lot of things going on in missions and more to come. I may, because I've got some, <laughs> some history, I may ask a question and then halfway answer it um, <laughs> on there. But I guess there's two questions I have. One is, I mean, we are a debt-free church. That's a statement. We've been a debt-free church for a long time. We kind Correct. of mentioned that as far as the mortgage and such like that. Um, are there any line items, anything like that, where taking on some debt would actually help the situation? I suspect the answer is no. But because <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything, but yeah. I thought I'd ask the question at least. Yeah, I, I think the, the ultimate goal right now is to not take on any additional debt uh, and to strictly do this by... as. I mean, as I said, as I mentioned before, we've, we've scraped the barrel and we've scraped every corner. We're going to continue to try to scrape a little bit more um, while at the same time combining that with to see if we can have growth and contributions um, and see what happens after that. But yeah, I think the, the initial goal right now is to not take on any additional debt. Suspected. And then the other thing, you, meant, you mentioned a couple of times a staff built for growth. 
that kind of quote. And so I wrote down quote, a staff built for growth. <laughs> and so I'm interested in knowing more about, and even if we don't know what the full picture of that is, or maybe that's something to reveal a little bit later on, is there a tenant or two that you would pop out to say this kind of like, for example? Sure, yeah. sure. So um, if, if you're going by uh, general average uh, across the board for churches in the United States, there's a lot of funny numbers. <laughs> but the most consistent that I've seen is that uh, recommendation is that you have about one staff person for every 50 to 75 attendees. Well, at that rate, if we're at the lower end of our average at 150 a Sunday, three staff members. Well, right now we're carrying five full-time and two part-time employees. So we are staffed. We have been staffed for where we were coming into COVID and coming out of COVID. We've maintained that staff, but along the way, when I took on the senior minister job, we didn't rehire connections. So that's been a position that has kind of just floated away and been absorbed by a lot of us in multiple, multiple ways. Uh, and then, of course, when Amanda left in April, May of this year, we brought Michelle on. Uh, but Michelle is a part-time. And that's a position that right now, if you haven't seen Michelle do the amazing things that she does and be able to pull off alongside Brady and Clayton uh, and, and April, <laughs> uh, be able to pull off, uh, uh, you know, summer blast and in like our own camp uh, in a matter of about a couple weeks, uh, she's producing amazing work when it comes to that. So um, I think when we say staffed for growth, it's a nice way of saying currently we are overstaffed but we're staffed for more. And that's where we want to be. That's where we want to go. Um, so that's our challenge over the next two and a half months. And, and honestly, guys, I know I've said that number five million times, but you know, that, that, this period of two and a half months is kind of the determining factor for what 2023 looks like. And if we get to that point and there hasn't been a large enough, big enough change, we're, we're going to have to make hard decisions. And so my hope is that we get to that point and we say, oh, we, we, can, we can push this a little bit. We can, we can extend this a little bit. We're seeing some, some good positive growth. Pledge campaign comes in for 2024. We've seen a, a big increase. We've seen a big increase in attendance, contributions, whichever. Um, ministry activity, that sort of thing. That's the kind of growth that we want to point toward. And, and Don, I don't think it goes without saying the vision is that we hold on to this staff. This staff is amazing. That's, I mean, that's the, I think one of the first priorities because if it, if it weren't, then I think this morning's message would have been a very different conversation. Yeah. I mean, if you're just looking for a quick fix, you're, you're overstaffed based on your numbers. And, and so the quick fix is to eliminate staff. And that's not what the vision of Matt has been. Yeah. Yeah. Kent. Oh, sorry. You want to go here first? Yeah. We'll come back. Oh, we'll come back. He probably should have went first, but um, <laughs> I got I got three things. I question uh, being that we have been going here this long. I had uh, this mission to me, and they said, "Well, where do you go?" And I said, "Well, I go to Raintree." But I think sometimes when you're coming here, you forget that people who are coming on the road up here, and this was what was said to me: it didn't look like anybody was here because the parking lot's back here. And I explained that to them. They said, well, it's like going to Roadhouse. You want to go there because something's happening there. Exactly. And I think we think coming here, we know everything's back here. But I think the visualization up front is sometimes overlooked uh, for people. Second thing is that I know a lot of churches after COVID are only at 60% of people returning. Mm -hmm. And I was reading an article and went to a meeting about it. And some people were saying um, what is bringing a lot of people back is that they're including mission things on their websites, what's happening. Because when people see where the money is going or they're seeing what that church is doing, they want to be involved in it. And the, the third thing is out of the, for this church, how many people haven't returned percentage-wise? And we were talking about earlier about 
telling people about um, what's happening at Braintree and everything on your own. But maybe consider putting that on our website. Get with people, have them tell what Reentry is doing with them in their life. I think people going to Facebook, TikTok, whatever they go to, are looking for the excitement that's in the voices of the people, not always the staff. Yeah. Thank you for those observations and, and that question, Kent. So uh, let's start with parking lot. Uh, north parking lot, if you would have been 2019, place was hopping. I mean, that was because that north door was the location of drop-off for kids in the morning before service. And we were also, to kind of duck into your, your question, um, we're right at about that between 50 and 60 percent mark. Prior to COVID, we were having discussions about starting a second service. Uh, we were attending more than 300 and upwards of that prior to uh, COVID. So we're at that 50 to 60 percent return slash in Lubbock, the trade, um, uh, the, the rotation of different churches. Um, so what you had prior to was in 2019, you had a much larger presence of kids and families that would park on the north side and go through that door. In COVID, we shut that door and said, everybody come through the south because nothing was going on in the children's wing. It was just, we're going to come together and worship and then be done. And then I think we, we got in the rhythm of that. And that door has more or less been uh, abandoned, <laughs> except for the guests that come in and then are like, and, you know, there's a map on the wall and, and all that good stuff. I think we've, we've discussed specifically that that 82nd Street frontage is one of our distinctives. We are on a main artery in town between two major avenues. We have a, our location is incredible. Maybe not so, no, not so much so for like southwestern growth, but specifically where we are, we're highly visible. So what can we do on the 82nd Street side to increase visibility, whether it's putting up banners about classes that are coming up this fall, a different series that's going to be preached through in the next time, um, whether it's emphasizing to a group of folks, hey, look at folks, uh, to park on the north side. And literally, that's all you got to do is just don't park in the back, park in the front. So we've got some life going on. It looks like we've got some life going on at the church. Little things that we can do uh, there. And I think, was that it? I heard Ken say that the staff needs to do a TikTok video. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, that's all you need me doing. <laughs> doing. Doing dances all day long. Yeah. So I just wanted to thank you for saying uh, what is a real priority to us in that uh, prayer. You know, I think it's real important that everybody here and Shirley and I don't go here, but we're invested here with family here. And uh, we have seen a lot of really good things that we really like in this church. But I, I think to really focus in on prayer, ask God and the Holy Spirit to move among the body and the community uh, to serve the community. I'm really, really excited that you all are giving 10% to the community. I think that's huge. I think... Uh, uh, churches should give to the community and it's really really good to hear that but just I really feel as a country we don't pray enough you know it says in the Old Testament that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray then I will heal their land and we know it's not just the church it's our whole country and nation that need to be healed so thank you for y'all uh working through all this and really focusing on prayer. And I just pray that the whole body will do that. Thank you. Appreciate that. I remember something else, Kent. You were just talking about the website. Um, yes to that. Yes. More, um, I think, more exposure about what we're doing, more testimony videos from folks on, on what's distinctive about here and, and what they're up to. Uh, but also it's, it's, it's a two-way street, to take Bruce's uh, phrase. It's, it's got to be a two-way street coming out of this season uh, when it comes to congregation and staff. Because what more or less developed in the wake of COVID uh, f for requirements, but also just we kind of got into the rhythm, was, well, staff will take care of it. 
And what staff kind of got into the rhythm of is, well, I'll just do it. Because that's what we had to do in the beginning. We had to manage and we had to do ministry from our homes and we had to produce it and get it out and get it disseminated to everybody. And then once we got back, it was kind of the rhythm because everybody's still nervous and, and what does church look like right now and can I stand next to you and can I do all these things? And, and it's easy to get into that rhythm. So I think we're also stepping into a season. Um, and I, the, the words that I put up on the last slide today said step up and, and step forward. And that was something that I hope was a Holy Spirit thing. Maybe it's not, you know, not just a gut thing, but it really, that's been kind of moving on me uh, lately, specifically just with this idea of this is, this is a season where the, the sideline can no longer be a factor um, for us. Where, we, where, where staff is going to want to help facilitate ministry, but ministry will have to be with the ministry of believers and the priesthood of you guys. Yeah. So of all the things that have gone out this morning, the easiest is for us to park in the front, in the north. I Easy mean, first I, I, move. We, we've got that. The reason that we haven't is because, and I, it was probably COVID, the door was locked. Yep. So if that door could be promised to be open, even for worship practice at 845, then you'll see our truck there. Park so up. if that can be a, a change, then I think you, we can fill that up. And you're, he's exactly right. That is, I've had many people, they say, where do you go? Rain tree. Oh, yeah, I've seen that church. But yeah, empty parking lot. Totally right. Thank you. Yep. That was brilliant. Put some balloons First. that on the sign every Sunday. Yeah. Easy, easy go to. Oh, got one over here. So one thing the devil always wants us to do is he wants us to react out of fear. You know, and we've learned that. Uh, we've been through a lot of different things. And God is always faithful. As you're praying, ask God to help you all as a church not to operate out of fear. As giving, don't operate out of fear. Our Bible says our God can supply abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. And uh, keep your tithe going uh, instead of coming back in fear because he can reproduce that. He can bless. He can have certain things that you have last longer. You know, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, which is very, very understated, but it seemed a lot for <laughs> at the time when they did it. But he owns it all. Everything we have is his. And uh, just remember that. Pray, don't operate out of fear. And, and, and Shirley was also suggesting that you all might go back. Uh, each one of you all has specific connections. And I don't know if you all have followed up with all the people that left. And you're talking about some people transition from this church to that church and back and forth. And it's probably been a circle in different things. But, uh, you know, just follow up with people, especially the people that aren't going anywhere, you know, and just love on them. Yep. I, I, one of the probably seems like one of the most understated things that we, that we did and that we've done in previous years. Uh, but I... I notice that every time I walk into the building through the south door uh, is our, our big stone, our Ebenezer stone, um, that was raised as a marker of God's provision. That we enter into this building and we go out of this building reminded of God's faithfulness. Important for us to keep that in mind. Two questions. Uh, the first one, we'll keep it lighthearted because my second one is pretty hard. What were some questions you didn't want us to ask today? <laughs> uh, okay. And next question. <laughs> there had to be some you anticipated. And you're like, oh, I really don't know how we're going to answer that. Was there one of those? That you um, crud. <laughs> I, you know, I think it, it, it mostly goes along with the caveat of... of kind of the, the nickel and diming on different line items and stuff like that. And I think because very often when we give to something, understandably, especially if it's a, uh, if it's a nonprofit, 
if it's a charitable organization, if we give to something, if we give of our finances, we understandably on one side uh, create ownership around that, uh, but then we also in the back of our minds can sometimes create um, hmm, entitlement around that thing. And so with the giving of contributions, it's an, it's an awkward place because in giving contributions to Raintree and, and, and to a church, we are offering that in trust and saying we, we, we are trusting that we're being good stewards and we trust that you will be as well. And so that is a heavy mantle to carry for us. It's a heavy burden to carry for us. Um, and we do the absolute best we can uh, on that front. We try to be as transparent with you guys as we possibly can. And so, uh, you know, background fear is like, oh, man, somebody's looked at the financial report and they saw December of 2022, we got this item and it spent this amount of money. And why did we do that? Well, in the long scheme of ministry, we felt like at that moment that was necessary. So anyway, that's kind of... Maybe something. What else? What's the second one? So I'm going to preface my second question with everyone here. Please understand, family, that I love you. We've been here for 14 years or something like that. I don't just hear my question. Sure. Is there a plan in place for if God's desire is that Rain Tree shuts doors? I would like to, if it comes to it, we try. We put forth our best effort. We walk in faith. And in faith, we learn this is it. Is there a plan in place for shutting these doors with the dignity that I think any long-term member would love to see Rain Tree shut its doors for? Yes, I, I think absolutely there, there has to be. Um, I think when you say plan is kind of doing a lot of work there um, in, in my mind, uh, because we have stipulations laid out in our constitution and bylaws that, that discuss maybe the more logistics side, the specifics of how we would dissolve as a congregation. Uh, but I think where we are right now, specifically in, in the timeline, uh, you know, I mentioned the couple of CDs that we have. Should we get to October? And let's, let's just hypothetical, because I have a thousand different scenarios on my spreadsheet going right now on, on what this could potentially look like. But let's say we get to October and we're flat. There hasn't been an increase in contributions. We are more or less the same, and we are still hitting an average of about 10,000 behind, which I'm going to caveat because I like to do that. The average of the last two years has been $10,000 a month. June was the first month in probably that two years. Maybe, maybe there, there might have been some. I need to look at my specific numbers. June was actually the first month that we ended in the black. Now, it was by the, what is it? By the hair of our chinny chin chin, by the skin of our teeth, there it is. Uh, and it was because of our wood chip campaign. And that boosted us up enough that we were able to end June in the black. Now. It actually wasn't in the black because you take away that money and you apply it to what was an in and out of, hey, we had a campaign and now we got to pay for it, and that's gone. So we were actually technically in the red about a thousand or so dollars for the month of June. But that's kind of promising. That's, that's kind of nice. Now, if we can maintain that and not have, because the other thing is that I didn't mention was that we operate as a staff, we operate on bi weekly pay periods. So at least twice a year, we have a month with three pay periods in it. That month's hard. It's usually in March and September, I think. April and October, what she said. <laughs> she knows better. April and October. Those are, those are hard months because that's, you pay our staff three times. Now it, it more or less balances out because it's 26 pay periods over the course of the year. However, those two months in particular are higher expense months, so the numbers don't look as great. But to provide you with just a little bit of hope for, for maybe the future, uh, those uh, shortages are getting smaller. But the average over the last two years that has drove, driven us to where we are is that 10000 a month. Um, now, specifically to your idea of the plan of kind of the, the dissolving of the church, what I was going to say was we are... We have that in the back of our minds, but we are operating first and foremost from a perspective of 
we still have space. We still have time. And then come October, let, like as the, the hypothetical, let's come October and we're completely flat, we have not seen any growth and we need to reduce, then we reduce. And we do our pledge campaign for 2024 and we get to 2024 and we monitor and we see where we are and if there's still no growth, then we maintain that position. Uh, but the, the, there's still space, plenty of space for long-term management and survival. And, and Neil, I appreciate the question. I'd like to follow it up with, I believe that we're a healthy congregation. Like, even though we're a smaller congregation than we were pre-COVID, I don't, we haven't been through a major split. We haven't been through a major controversy from the pulpit. I mean, you've been here long enough where ministers come and go within 18 months and you're like, what the heck just happened? And, and people are running out the doors. I mean, I, I feel like the core is strong. So I don't think we're there yet. It's always a possibility, but but I don't think that we're a dying church. I think that we're, we're a healthy church that needs to figure out how to take the next step. Just to dovetail on that, I think the, the, the biggest question and the question that we've asked as an eldership and what we've been asking as a staff uh, is the question that you guys, we think most of you have, which is just, who are we? Who are we and, and, and how can I serve? And where do I plug in? And what, is, what does ministry look like here? And that's the questions that we hope to continue to answer. I will say kind of on the more, again, on the more positive side, because um, you've had plenty of, of Debbie Downer today. We had our second pledge campaign in 2022 for this year, for 2023. We are halfway through the year. We are 50% paid on that pledge campaign. We, we are absolutely up to the bar when it comes to anybody who has pledged to the church, we, are, we have received 50% of their contribution through 50% of the year. We're an incredibly faithfully giving church. There are pockets and folks that whether it's, I don't have an anchor point, I haven't been connected yet, I haven't been, been told or taught about what does is, what is giving look like, um, there are pockets where we can grow that a little bit, uh, and, and hopefully that'll help with a little bit of teaching and a little bit of... Uh, uh, coaxing along as we go through this next period. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very much a, a, li- a, a, a church that is alive and we are looking for our next step. Any Maybe. other questions? Just kind of, as I've looked through my own life of financial struggles, um, why are we not already pursuing yard Like, I know it's $600, that's not much, but if I'm struggling on my home finances, the yard guy's gone, (laughs) because that's what we do. Like, why are we not already, like, bootstrapped, let's get the lawnmowers and handle this? Absolutely. Um, So, part of it comes from, I think, a desire to, that we've had over the last two years, to where, uh, uh, you know, what's, where's growth going to be? How's, how's growth going to be? Are we hoping for growth? Um, so we, we wanted to give space for that to happen. Um, however, the idea of a lawn, let's say that you know, lawn care is 600, and that's actually, we left a previous company that was doing pre-emergent care and weed care and stuff like that uh, that was costing us about an extra $1,500. So we've been whittling away as we go. Now we're hit with a base activity, which is the lawn. And it's kind of keeping in mind, it's kind of the, like we said, it's the nickel and diming, but it is the, okay, now we're sharing with you, we're not going to be able to cut our lawn unless somebody does it volunteer. Um, so I don't know that kind of answers your question, Sarah. We, we've been whittling away, and that's just one thing that we mentioned that we've kept on. So yeah. germ blast is one. That's a four thousand dollar a year expense. It's gone. Staff has been looking at the electricity and with um, electricity going to market. You know what is the opportunity there? Are there insurance opportunities? Health insurance is always expensive, and the smaller your staff, the more expensive it gets. So reaching back out to the brokers to see is there a different insurance plan that the church staff can be on? Are there? There. I mean, the lawn's just the one that hasn't gone yet. Yeah. It, it connects us to when you care for the building that houses your family, it's a connection point um, that you share. When you, you roll up your sleeves together, you share.
share that experience and the community grow the agenda? If, and just, just my random thoughts. Well, I think um, I, I, to, um, to be candid, um, there was probably there was probably hesitation on my part on, well, we've got major 82nd Street frontage. We want to make sure that it looks good. Volunteers, you can't call up a volunteer on Saturday and say, hey, you're not here yet. What the heck? I'm not paying you. That type of deal. But more so, I think it's probably a little bit of a holdover of that same feeling of, hey, we got it. Like, we can take care of it. We're not going to call somebody and inconvenience them or anything like that. And it's really, it's, it's shifting away from what, where we went or where we were kind of forced to go in COVID um, back to a more traditional, we're all in this together. And if we need the lawn mowed because we need to save 600 bucks a month, then let's get a team together and let's mow the lawn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have an extra 600 in my budget. Actually, <laughs> but I do have my work t-shirt and I'm Heard. Ross. Right, just to kind of, if I understood the question correctly, why haven't we just made those cuts, right? So my, my perception, to kind of put a nutshell on it, is I feel like the staff, the leadership is trying to let this heal naturally before putting rain tree on life support. Sure. Is that kind of yeah, what I'm yeah, getting I, here? Yeah, I think um, just coming from a place of, of, you know, could we maintain that? Let's see if there's kind of like, you know, giving space for growth. Uh, and then what needed, I think what truthfully, what for me, what needed to happen is this conversation today to be shared, at which point we can very clearly say, all right, we're saving 600 bucks a month. Who's going to mow the lawn? And, and, and folks would be there to respond. So it, it felt like kind of we needed to have today's conversation first uh, before we moved into that. David? Well, I've heard a lot of wonderful things here this morning about what we can do and all of this. But I think the, one of the real important things we can do, our whole congregation is not here today. The thing we need to do is to be talking to our brothers and sisters right here in church, the ones that didn't come, and, and explain to them what we have heard and how hard our staff is working to make our church better and to reach out to our brothers and sisters throughout the world. And, our, and all, of our, uh, all of our giving, the church does for different things. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And this is where we all have to communicate with our brothers and sisters right here in church and get everybody involved. And, and I think that's one of the big things. And that way, there's going to be more people out there talking to people. Thank you. My wife and I are on Medicare now. But for a while, we were uh, part of a, uh, it's called Christian Care MediShare, which is kind of like a credit union of health care. And then there was one other one we were on for a shorter period of time for two years. They were both highly, highly rated. And I don't know if they offer that for churches. It's only offered for believers who are obviously living a, a chaste, uh, pledged uh, lifestyle uh, they may offer that to churches because obviously y'all are uh, encouraging all your members to live a uh, chaste uh, lifestyle and not smoke and stuff like that. But uh, they paid great. So on a, on a shared health care, they basically uh, shared all medical expenses. And, and both these companies had a great rate of paying off on everything. And they had a writer if a claim came above a million dollars they had insurance for that but she had some major work and they paid everything just like a regular insurance company they were rated really really high so you all might check into that for uh, maybe the one of these companies offers in here but there's two that really stood out that had been in, uh, in the organization for a long time and had really really ratings we switched the other one I don't remember the name of it right now but their rates were pretty doggone reasonable. So, oh yeah, and they 
Yeah, when she had a claim, uh, they'd call up and talk to her about it and pray with you on the phone. I mean, they're a Christian organization, mm -hmm. so that might be one thing to check out. Yeah, yeah, that was one thing I know that um, uh, Jeremy mentioned as part of the line item, kind of looking over the budget and that sort of thing. Uh, looking at current health insurance for staff, uh, what does that look like if we shop that around, if we find either a different policy that covers us better, if we subsidize outside of the church group uh, for a, a staff member's spouse that they have insurance through their work and we can partner through them uh, and just help subsidize that for a more reduced cost. Um, month to month, that adds up as we go. So that'll be a part of our next two and a half months data mining as we determine what we can do uh, to find those little nickels and dimes here and there. Okay. Last call. Let me make just one uh, brief comment. You know, we've, we focused almost entirely on finances today. And I know that some of the stereotypes that are out there is that that's all the churches are concerned about. Let me just reiterate that our primary focus, our primary objective is ministry. This is just part of the reality of doing ministry is that it costs. And that's, that's why we're having to focus on this today. But it's not the priority of this church. The priority is ministry. Yeah. All right. All right, well, let me go ahead and close this in prayer, and uh, we'll be done. Gracious Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for, for each and every one of the folks that are gathered here, God, to just gain more information, to uh, seek you out in the middle of this process. God, we pray again for your blessing over this next season at Raintree. God, we pray for uh, ideas to come through. We pray for growth. We pray for excitement. Uh, folks being willing to volunteer and support and, and meet needs in ministry. Uh, God, we pray for our finances. We know that it is in your hand uh, and all we need to be is faithful. And so we pray that we would be. Uh, Lord, thank you again so much for all of your love, grace, mercy, and peace. We take that with us as we go. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray and all God's people said, amen. amen. Y'all take care. Have a great week. If you have any further questions, please submit those on the app. We'll see you guys later.